this is a big hurdle for the wind industry. We haven't found any good solutions yet. essentially hollow throughout you can consider it's like a boat boat hole you know it's pretty much solid fiberglass and there's some some cross members uh, I don't know this far out if there's any cross members but definitely down blade at, at the thicker end there's some members to give some structural rigidity but you can hear even out here it is just a little hole a lot of flex look at that The, this farm, this 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 wind farm is from around 2008, and uh, you know these are the small blades. Eli, we were just, Eli just mentioned. You know it's amazing that this is larger than the current blades on there, from what it seems like. But these are the small blades compared to the next gen turbines that are being deployed right now. Not much wind today out in West Texas. So it's, it's just a lot of logistics infrastructure to unload, unload these blades, get them staged here, then begin the removal process off the rotor assembly, bring the rotor down, get all that hauled off. And, and you know, you have multiple cranes out here. You have a crane to position and then you have a crane to assemble. So and there's they're just right here. I mean, we're just talking about Sweetwater. There's 700 of these. Th this this project, you know, when we really think about it, um, you know, we haven't talked to anyone involved out here, but this is years years long. That one's blowing some oil out for sure. You can see like it's got it, it's exhaust pipe. Like there is a, there is an onboard generator that's helping like right now to probably to run enough electricity to turn it. <laughs> that's an exhaust pipe. It's definitely got some sort of like diesel generator in there. So right now the whole upper assembly, the, the whole turbine is turning. We can hear the electricity doesn't seem like the neighboring turbines moving. It's fully vinyl tarped. It's fully sealed, yeah. Oh, it's zipped. The repower drive train. Okay. There you go. So new drive train, new rotor. So this this whole 
project is going to be GE. Pretty minimal security. It's just one little, one little lock there. Just tracking, you know, the transport of these blades. Uh, it's in a one oversized load per blade, and at least three pilot cars per blade. So, it's just enormous amount of logistics infrastructure. It's over 2,000 of these blades will get landfilled or stored or. You know, disposed of in some manner somewhere this is this is a major uh, update um, and and these are one of some of the early fields in Texas so this is going to start becoming you know an ongoing process throughout the state that we're going to keep track of we got a good example of the amount of hydrocarbons that are used to keep wind turbines up and running. The gearboxes and the internal components require a lot of oil and this one had a massive leak to the extent uh, it's ran all the way down the side and created a huge uh, oil slick all the way around this turbine. This doesn't happen extremely frequently. You'll see the uh, uprights on the turbines sometimes are coated brown and will wear off after, you know, after a lot of light and rain exposure. Uh, but this is an example of one of the uglier sides of, of wind turbines and all the different things that uh, go into keeping these systems up and running. And this one's already been uh, repaired and this is the extent of the cleanup that they can do. I guess they can't really clean the entire system that well. Um, so there's a lot of oil remaining that'll just kind of get uh, degraded by sunlight over time. And as you can see, there's been a lot of blowing dust recently. So it's fully coated with dirt. This is a 2020 GE turbine blade assembly. I don't know the exact size of this, but Come, come around here and just look down it from here this is the most this is the most impressive sight right here just looking down that these are massive blades conceptualizing this with me the upper housing so you you climb up the the uh, tower into the housing and so the housing is here and then you have the blade assembly here so this part is going to be connected to the in, in the entire housing and then you would access the, the blade rotor assembly by coming out the top of the housing. These blades are able to be articulated and pitch changed in order to catch more wind and optimize uh, production of this system. And you can see electric motors on each blade, those are utilized, they catch those teeth that you can see to adjust the pitch of the blade to optimize performance. There's obviously control panels for each blade here. Uh, all the electronics and everything are right there. This one has currently been brought to the ground and laid flat by this crane in order to replace some components up top. So this is a this field is th this this farm here is about two and a half years old. We have one, two, three cranes that are doing full servicing of these systems in the immediate vicinity. We got about a half mile there we have a crane and about a quarter mile there we have a crane on turbines that are being serviced and we're seeing cranes moving across this entire uh, wind farm here. So this is an incredible amount of infrastructure just to keep these up and running and they're just over two years old. So that's not a very good look. We're trying, we're trying to get an idea of what the reliability is of these things and what the, up, what the upkeep is on keeping these turbines running. And what we see here around West Texas is there's a lot of downtime. And not just downtime, there's a lot 
of infrastructure to keep these cranes moving around and keep bringing these up and down. These are all oil and gas well, well sites here. So these are just the pads everywhere. And then a lot of these around here are wind turbine pads too. So we're in a wind turbine zone and then we also have oil wells. So you can look out over the hill right here and you got an oil or a, a oil and gas well right here, a, a new well right behind it. There's a pump jack and then behind that you have a wind turbine spinning. We want to see where the blades go. Uh, there's a big holding facility in Sweetwater that those blades have been stacked up there based on Google Street View for um, almost five years now, but there's a big gap in the photos, so we're thinking over five years they haven't been touched. Um, there's a sign in front of that holding facility that says these are waiting to be recycled, but you know, I, they've been there over five years. So, you know, what's going on with these blades? the blades that are being disposed of at those facilities, how many blades are there, and then quantify these 700 turbines just around Sweetwater times three. So over 2,100 turbines, over 2,100 turbine blades, what's the footprint going to be of the storage? What's the volume? What's the footprint if they're stacked? And and really try to understand the numbers here. You know, what is what is the impact? We're, we're in turbine country out here. This this little area is it's got a lot of oil and gas wells. It's got solar and it's got wind. So a lot of energy out here, a lot of energy transmission out here. So there's just a lot of electricity out here and this is a really exciting area to get to document. So we're headed to Slayton and we're gonna check out another turbine graveyard. These are all um, expired blades that have reached their usable life and have come here to die. Um, a lot of claims of recycling these blades, but we're not seeing any of it. These have been here for years and you can see these are uh, some of the end sections of the blades and they've been cut in half some of them been cut in half to increase maybe increase stacking efficiency some out there have just been kind of chopped up and they're really decaying and then you've got some of the bases of the blades right here that are Structurally, you know, they're just piled up because they can't really do much else with them. But these blades are, as you can see, I mean, they're made almost 100% out of fiberglass, so they're really non recyclable and technically, you know, could be hazardous in landfills. Um, we're out hunting for what the solution is, what's going on with these blades. There's just in the localized area thousands of these blades being replaced within an hour of here right now and we're just seeing a large amount of graveyards like this popping up this is a large footprint it's obviously an eyesore and at the large scale where are all these going are these getting buried in landfills and what's going on with these um, we were in Sweetwater today at another large graveyard uh, just south of town and we're gonna we're gonna be checking out more of these graveyards they're they're all over the place near these high density wind farm zones so this is this is an example of kind of the tertiary impact of renewables uh, specifically wind so you've got to replace the blades the drivetrain and the rotor because these blades they are fiberglass and they deteriorate over time so this is a big hurdle for the wind industry uh, and we haven't found any good solutions yet and we're going to keep hunting for them but for now 
we've got a big eyesore and a big problem uh, at a large scale with disposing of these blades. I'm Ron Kendall. I'm Eli Rosen. We're independent filmmakers documenting the dynamics of energy in the state of Texas. We'll be exploring all forms of electricity generation and trying to uncover solutions that will protect our planet and ourselves. Subscribe to Yucca Films to follow our exploration of energy in Texas.